This is brought to you by the Praetorian on both YouTube and Facebook. In astronomy, a celestial coordinate system, or celestial reference system, is a system for specifying positions of satellites, planets, stars, galaxies, and other celestial objects. Coordinate systems can specify an object's position in three-dimensional space or plot merely its direction on a celestial sphere if the object's distance is unknown or trivial. The coordinate systems are implemented in either spherical or rectangular coordinates. Spherical coordinates, projected on the celestial sphere, are analogous to the geographic coordinate system used on the surface of Earth. These differ in their choice of fundamental plane, which divides the celestial sphere into two equal hemispheres along a great circle. Rectangular coordinates, in appropriate units, are simply the Cartesian equivalent of the spherical coordinates, with the same fundamental, x, y, plane and primary, x-axis, direction. Each coordinate system is named after its choice of fundamental plane. Coordinate systems. The fundamental plane divides the celestial sphere into two equal hemispheres and defines the baseline for the latitudinal coordinates, similar to the equator in the geographic coordinate system. The poles are located at plus or minus 90 degree from the fundamental plane. The primary direction is the starting point of the longitudinal coordinates. The origin is the zero distance point, the center of the celestial sphere, although the definition of the celestial sphere is ambiguous about the definition of its center point. Horizontal system. The horizontal, or altitude azimuth, the system is based on the position of the observer on Earth, which revolves around its axis once per sidereal day, 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4.091 seconds, with the star background. The positioning of a celestial object by the horizontal system varies with time, but is a useful coordinate system for locating and tracking objects for observers on Earth. It is based on the position of stars relative to an observer's ideal horizon. Equatorial system. The equatorial coordinate system is centered at Earth's center, but fixed relative to the celestial poles and the March equinox. The coordinates are based on the location of stars relative to Earth's equator, if it were projected out to an infinite distance. The equatorial describes the sky as seen from the solar system, and modern star maps almost exclusively use equatorial coordinates. The equatorial system is the normal coordinate system for most professional and many amateur astronomers, having an equatorial mount that follows the movement of the sky during the night. Celestial objects are found by adjusting the telescopes or other instruments' scales so that they match the equatorial coordinates of the selected object to observe. Popular choices of pole and equator are the older B1950 and the modern J2000 systems, but a pole and equator of date can also be used, meaning one appropriate to the date under consideration, such as when a measurement of the position of a planet or spacecraft is made. There are also subdivisions into mean of date coordinates, which average out or ignore notation, and true of date, which include notation. Ecliptic system. The fundamental plane is the plane of the Earth's orbit, called the ecliptic plane. 
There are two principal variants of the ecliptic coordinate system. Geocentric ecliptic coordinates centered on the Earth, and heliocentric ecliptic coordinates centered on the center of mass of the solar system. The geocentric ecliptic system was the principal coordinate system for ancient astronomy, and is still useful for computing the apparent motions of the Sun, Moon, and planets. The heliocentric ecliptic system describes the planet's orbital movement around the Sun and centers on the barycenter of the solar system, i.e. very close to the center of the Sun. The system is primarily used for computing the positions of planets and other solar system bodies, as well as defining their orbital elements. Galactic System The galactic coordinate system uses the approximate plane of our galaxy as its fundamental plane. The solar system is still the center of the coordinate system, and the zero points are defined as the direction towards the galactic center. Galactic latitude resembles the elevation above the galactic plane, and galactic longitude determines direction relative to the center of the galaxy. Supergalactic system. The supergalactic coordinate system corresponds to a fundamental plane that contains a higher than the average number of local galaxies in the sky as seen from Earth. Converting coordinates. Conversions between the various coordinate systems are given. Notation. Horizontal coordinates. A. Azimuth. A. Altitude. Equatorial coordinates. Alpha. Right ascension. Delta. Declination. H. Hour angle. Ecliptic coordinates. Lambda. Ecliptic longitude. Beta. Ecliptic latitude. Galactic coordinates. L. Galactic longitude. B. Galactic latitude. Miscellaneous. Lambda O. Observer's longitude. O. Observer's latitude. Epsilon, obliquity of the ecliptic, about 23.4 degrees. Theta L, local sidereal time. Theta G, Greenwich sidereal time. Equatorial left right arrow ecliptic. The classical equations, derived from spherical trigonometry, for the longitudinal coordinate, are presented to the right of a bracket. Simply dividing the first equation by the second gives the convenient tangent equation seen on the left. The rotation matrix equivalent is given beneath each case. This division is ambiguous because tan has a period of 180 degrees pi, whereas cos and sin have periods of 360 degrees 2 pi. Notes on conversion. Angles in the degrees, degree, minutes, and seconds of sexagesimal measure must be converted to decimal before calculations are performed. Whether they are converted to decimal degrees or radians depends upon the particular calculating machine or program. Negative angles must be carefully handled. 10 degree 230 must be converted as 10 degree 230. Angles in the hours, h, minutes, m, and seconds, s, of time measure must be converted to decimal degrees or radians before calculations are performed. 1h equals 15 degrees. 1m equals 15. 1s equals 15. Angles greater than 360 degrees, 2 pi, or less than 0 degrees may need to be reduced to the range 0 degree 360 degree, 0, 2 pi, depending upon the particular calculating machine or program. The cosine of a latitude, declination, ecliptic and galactic latitude, and altitude, is always positive by definition, since the latitude varies between 90 degree and plus 90 degree. Inverse trigonometric functions arcsine, arcosine, and arctangent are quadrant ambiguous, and results should be carefully evaluated. Use of the second arctangent function, denoted in computing as atn2, y, x, or atn2, y, x, which calculates the arctangent of y slash x using the sine of both arguments to determine the right quadrant, is recommended when calculating longitude slash right ascension slash azimuth. An equation that finds the sine, followed by the arcsin function, is recommended when calculating latitude slash declination slash altitude. Azimuth, A, is referred here to the south point of the horizon, the common astronomical reckoning. An object on the meridian to the south of the observer has A equals H equals zero degrees with this usage. However, an astrophys all day Z, in the large binocular telescope fits file convention, and in x for example, the azimuth is east of north. In navigation and some other disciplines, azimuth is figured from the north. The equations for altitude, A, do not account for atmospheric refraction.
The equations for horizontal coordinates do not account for diurnal parallax, that is, the small offset in the position of a celestial object caused by the position of the observer on the Earth's surface. This effect is significant for the Moon, less so for the planets, minute for stars or more distant objects. Observer's longitude, lambda, here is measured positively westward from the prime meridian. This is contrary to current IAU standards. by the Praetorian on both YouTube and Facebook. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.